Illness is the night side of life, a more onerous citizenship. Everyone who is born holds dual citizenship, in the kingdom of the well and in the kingdom of the sick. Although we all prefer to use only the good passport, sooner or later each of us is obliged, at least for a spell, to identify ourselves as citizens of that other place. Susan Sontag says that illness is not so much a state as a place, a different world. I believe this to be true. The real suffering comes from not knowing this, from trying to be a sick body existing in the able-bodied universe with its own rules and logic. The sick place is not a place of Friday nights and graduations. It is a place of nameless mornings, waking up to a gift on your pillow, the gift of a day, of the rented use of your own legs and your own clear mind. It is a place less permanent than death and less dependable than life, where each day you wake up and ask the elements outside of your control, is this a living sort of day? I spent my adolescence with the dual citizenship between these two places. A split identity, a split consciousness, proving to myself and to others that I could be a participating constituent of the living world. I was even, for a brief time, one of its liveliest citizens, its star pupil. I was Persephone, a soul suspended across the realms. That is where the sick girls reside, crossing the river Styx, paying Sharon with silver wrenched from our insides, not ever knowing how high the cost is. The discovery that we all must come to in our own time is that to live between worlds is a life sentence. Of course, many will tell you that the sick world does not exist. This is common knowledge among those who have never been there. They will hold you to the laws and judgments of a world that denies you the privileges of its other inhabitants. But deep down, though you participate and lead, though you overcompensate for your secret foreignness, you know you are only a tourist in the healthy place. You know your Friday nights and graduations are merely a few token boxes ticked, a way of proving to yourself that you too belong here. You condemn yourself to a life of cognitive dissonance, to a body and soul suspended at either end of the universe. I am uninterested in the nomad's life. The next time I cross the river Styx, It'll be with a one-way ticket. Not to return until I am old and wrinkled when perhaps I will be able to accept that I, my full time enjoyed in the other world, finally belong here. Until I can afford to pay the boatman, I commit myself to this place. I surrender to the presence on my pillow and the times when I am not gifted today. And when they come, I do not despair. I lie and wait for the next day to come, confident that it will, happy to strive to enjoy my time in this strange place. Friends may come and visit me here, and they bring with them stories and laughter and the occasional tragedy. They speak as if in another language, with a foreign logic and distant problems. They sometimes apologize for troubling me, and say that I have far more going on. In truth, I do not. My problems are strangely simple. My world is uncomplicated. I live in a place that exists more in time than in space. My problem is time, the price I must pay is time. What is stolen and used to beat me down is time, but the solution, the path to redemption, is time too. And in the end, the reward is time. Days after days after days and more days, those are the riches I strive for. The heavenly miracle of eyes fluttering open and rising from slumber without pain or difficulty. This is the milk and honey of my dreams. And once it comes, now that I'm wise to its ways, I no longer fight it. I lie down and let it happen. At first, every small apprehension is magnified, every anxiety a pounding terror. Then the pain comes, and I concentrate only on that. Right there is the usefulness of migraine. There, in that imposed yoga, the concentration on the pain. 
for when the pain recedes, 10 or 12 hours later, everything goes with it. All the hidden resentments, all the vain anxieties. The migraine has acted as a circuit breaker and the fuses have emerged intact. There is a pleasant convalescent euphoria. I open the windows and feel the air, eat gratefully, sleep well. I notice the particular nature of a flower in a glass on the stair landing. I count my blessings. Got lots and lots of trouble. I'm thinking of the kids in the knickerbocker shirt to young ones picking in the pool hall windows after school. You got trouble. Folks, right here, River City. One of my New Year's resolutions is to try to speak more clearly because I often I have a bad habit of mumbling and not enunciating properly, and it means that sometimes people just have no clue what I'm saying. So I'm trying to practice uh, speaking more clearly with a little help from. The music man. <laughs> We're in terrible, terrible trouble. That game with 50 numbered balls is the devil's tool. Oh, yes, we got trouble, trouble, trouble. Trouble, trouble, we got big, big trouble with the T. That rhymes with P. That stands for poo. <laughs>